Hey, this is Sami Heinonen. You're now about to be updated of the We Are AR scene. So, uh, today's agenda is a, a brief summary of the, all these acronyms related tools and software and hardware. Also, how Finnish visual and augmented reality business is doing, the most typical use cases, how to get started, and some clients and the new business uh, opportunities arising on the horizon. So, briefly about me. So, my name is Sami Heron. I work as a uh, lead designer uh, of customer experience at Sanoma Media Finland. But at the night time, I'm working as a kind of freelancer. Uh, around uh, virtual reality and augmented reality topics. I'm using Netfreak alias. Uh, currently I'm working, as I said, at Sanoma. Previously I worked for Nokia and Tieto uh, years ago. Uh, okay, the first topic is a uh, tech-related, all those fancy and interesting acronyms like VR, uh, AR and MR. So let's start with the most common one, the VR. So the VR refers to virtual reality, meaning that the, the whole world you're experiencing is, is a, a synthetic world. It's created uh, purely digitally. Uh, you can watch and walk 360. And uh, hardware is placed in VR, Oculus Rift, it's a wife Google Google Daydream and Samsung Gear. Um, to give you some kind of idea, of what are the uh, units sold? Uh, Samsung Gear uh, was sold uh, five million pieces uh, last January. PlayStation uh, topped something like one million units and by end of last year. HD Vive was uh, four hundred and fifty and Oculus Rift to 50. This gives you some kind of idea what are the different uh, proportions of all these different hardwares. So augmented reality, AR, that refers to, to technology that uh, helps you to have things like Pokemon Go, uh, you can have overlaid content, you can have like car or aircraft heads up display. And uh, you can use the AR with your iPhone, for example, with uh, an IKEA app where you can try how the new software would look like in your apartment. And um, B2P versions of these devices are Vuzix and Microsoft HoloLens currently. And devices sold, there are no exact numbers, but according to Roger Waldkin from Microsoft, they said, that they they've sold thousands or ten thousands, not hundreds of thousands units uh, in January this year. Uh, Vuzix they had a target two years ago to have the M100 uh, be sold uh, twenty five hundred units, and the M300 last year was target was ten thousand units. Uh, according to Forrester last year. Uh, there will be in next eight years, there will be 14 million smart class users, meaning augmented reality users in the United States. So that gives you an idea what that could be worldwide. So it's increasing rapidly in B2B area. And the most promising platform from for customers B2C signed on AR is of course the smartphone. And uh, there are new promising platforms for the Android and iOS coming out. There's a Google Tango uh, kind of SDK coming out. And of course, Apple uh, iOS ARKit framework. And that is, say, from the B2C side, the most promising platform that uh, people can start using. Uh, uh, for example, some Unreal Engine or, or some other uh, game engine to create content on top of these smartphones. Yeah. And the third one is the mixed reality. This is a, um, this is a hard topic of whether we should at all talk about MR or is it all augmented reality. Uh, 
But currently nowadays, people are still talking about mixed reality, so let's have it here. So mixed reality means something that it's a kind of a mix of both we are and they are. So kind of, kind of target, the vision, is that the real and synthetic worlds, they can interact, and you can't really tell the difference what is real and what is not. So magically be saying that they are doing this kind of mixed reality device, but only time will tell if that is true. Then, of course, we have the kind of a top of the line, the RR, that refers to real reality. We are living it. And, um, but all the time, let's say, let's say 10 or 20 years, two people actually recognize where goes the line. Or are, are we like living in, in multidimensional worlds in real and uh, artificial uh, environments? And we can say what's true. What's, What's true, what is not. From the um, sales pitch point of view, and these acronyms, uh, uh, PlayStation, Vive, and Oculus Rift, they are saying honestly that, that they are virtual reality devices. But then the definition of AR and MR goes a little bit blur uh, because they, Microsoft doesn't necessarily say that it's an AR device. I can't remember the exact. Uh, term or phrase they're using, but it's not augmented reality. And uh, uh, also Vario, the Finnish new uh, headset manufacturer, says that it's a MR device. And of course, magically saying that they are far beyond that, that whether it is or not, it is a MR device. So only time will tell. Uh, then you need some kind of a tool to create these uh, experiences on top of these different uh, 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 techniques or, or, or uh, realities. And uh, there are currently plenty of uh, 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 great tools like Unreal Engine from Epic, Unity, Cry Engine, Amazon Slumberyard. And of course, these latter two ones are not necessarily that kind of traditional game engines, but they are kind of promising platforms. You can build something on top of it. Apple or ARKit and Google Tangle. For example, you can create your game on top of Unreal Engine and then deploy it on top of Apple ARKit and use it on your phone. So how to get started? So the bar is actually quite low. So if you just like a perhaps uh, uh, HD Vive, that's uh, in discount for currently something like 600 euros and uh, Unreal Engine is free for B2B use only if you start creating games you have to start pay, paying small fee and that is so fair that's amazing and of course open source 3D uh, software like Blender you can use so this is all you need and it's just about your imagination yeah, and customer needs how to get there so now I'm going to show you one real life virtual reality case. Uh, this February uh, in Hasek International Boat Show, the uh, Derhi uh, is a very well-known Finnish uh, boat brand. And they wanted to have uh, people to test drive their uh, uh, Derhi 445C. But the problem was that it was winter time and he had to do we had to do that indoors. So, so what we did was that we took one real derhi, we took one real steering wheel and one real throttle from uh, engine manufacturer. Then we created a virtual environment that was uh, Sibo, the eastern part co coast of uh, Helsinki. And then we created sort of a game where you can test drive it. And uh, then we put all these different things together. And uh, and uh, one example was the day how to create uh, the feeling that you are really driving the boat was that we wanted to have you steering the using the real wheel and, and throttling with the using the real throttle. So we we created a thing where we, you have that thing, and then you were able to maneuver that. So we disabled one. Uh, trust master steering wheel and then we put all those things together and then we got this custom made uh, steering wheel and throttle so the event itself 
uh, we have four people facilitating that, one at a time, of course. We clean up all those headsets all the time, and we help with the headset and the game, how it works. And first, we limited the time to 10 minutes, but then we realized quite soon that that was too long time, a period of the time. So we decreased the amount of time to five minutes. And in a, one week, we had close to 1,000 drivers. So from that point of view, uh, it was a, uh, we managed to create attention and engagement. We managed to electrify the kind of demo field and uh, it managed to out to all those goals to, to get people to the booth and uh, uh, engage and uh, interact with the sales guys and uh, test drive it and feel it and play with the emotions, how it would be all in this kind of a great product. So business-wise, where's the beef? Where's the money? So everybody's asking that it's now the time for the VR, AR, and MR business. So definitely, yes, it is. But there's always the but. And this time the but is that technology itself, it is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Or well, not absolutely nothing, but it's it's a kind of playing different role. It should play kind of a TV role here. So the content itself is always still is the king. So uh, you have to understand the 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 real needs of the customer and create create content. Otherwise, people are not using that. That same goes with the games currently for the virtual reality. Big AAA classified uh, corporations, game corporations are waiting for uh, market to be uh, mature enough. And then they start creating create content. But it's kind of what you can make. You, you can have those things separately. Um, so how to get there, how to, one is that commercial success where, where it comes from. So it's after a couple of years, the whole VR, AR, MR business, it will be a business as any other. It's, it's a kind of a, it can be design, it can be product design, it can be healthier, marketing, training, games, fitness, hardware, uh, uh, data visualization, arts, movies. But the key to success still is that you have to understand, you have to do research, you have to concept, you have to design, develop, and then you have to deploy. Meaning that you have to put the customer first, you have to do the customer-centric code uh, code design kind of a model, a traditional service design model, where you start trying to figure out the different hypotheses, what people need or want, uh, whether they are P2C or B2B users, and uh, trying to prototype and iterate it uh, many times and then it starts to narrow it down and then do the some prioritization and then you have to do the normal stuff like prioritization and piloting. So that's that's it. Uh, from the money point of view, the virtual reality revenue uh, that will be in 2020, something like $30 billion worldwide. And uh, until 2019, it's a hardware that creates the most of the revenue. But after that point, it will be the main thing, the content. So the software itself. So if we need to list uh, the biggest potential per reality, um, uh, the VR, it has some B2C potential, but because of the, uh, there are not too many people with the very expensive headsets at home, I think the most potential uh, target group for the beat, uh, for the VR is P2P. Game industry, of course, yeah. Uh, currently, the VR actually beats the clumsy current state of uh, uh, augmented reality. So it's AR is not yet there. It's it's coming, but it's not there yet. Um, and of course, the virtual reality, because it's 100% uh, digitalized, uh, synthetic world. You have no uh, constraints using your creativity to cr create different experience uh, and express self. self. Augmented reality. Uh, the one great thing is that they are, there is a great number of people already have having a, a sufficient uh, sufficiently performing uh, smartphones uh, and you can create already augmented reality stuff um, 
And uh, uh, it is a great for B2C game opportunity. If you think about Pokemon Go, it crossed $1 billion revenue by February this year. So it's a kind of big thing. Um, mixed reality, it's kind of a tough thing that how, how that will change our lives. I think personally that it will change our lives. Uh, after that point when we have a very great MR devices, they're going to be part of us, who we are. And as said, you can't actually then tell about the difference between what is real and what is not. But if you think about the internet like a couple of years ago, it used to be kind of a privilege of Western modern societies to have that kind of a uh, thing like internet. Uh, maybe MR will be something similar in the future that wealthy countries and people living in those countries, they have this luxury or possibility to, to live their lives in mixed reality. But then uh, uh, those who are not uh, uh, able to uh, afford that kind of a investment they, they have to live without it might be that there's a more natural and better way, but time will tell. About the technologic uh, uh, gizmos, the hot ones coming out, um, there will be holograms, of course, because of the augmented reality. Uh, Microsoft HoloLens 2, Google Glass, they are creating the second version of that. Of course, the Apple AR kit, uh, Apple smart classes maybe coming out. And what is the Finnish company? Well, I'm saying here that it's a VR. So <laughs> don't think me wrong, but as long as it's, I haven't seen uh, the first one, it's a VR. Uh, motion capture suits, um, how you capture your movement and create your character in your game. Uh, maybe Facebook is doing something uh, class kind of product uh, instead of uh, Oculus Rift. Um, mind control, this is totally new. Uh, some prototypes seen already in the internet or Facebook. Um, you can actually move things in virtual reality environment using your mind. That is amazing. Um, uh, and warehouse scale motion tracking, meaning, meaning that you do, you're not tied into room scale you can go warehouse scale. So meaning that, for example, uh, kind of theme parks, VR theme parks are possible to let people like walk freely uh, in a huge, on a huge area. Of course, the mobile virtual reality that is needed to, to utilize that possibility are coming strong. That it means in practice that you are putting a laptop on your back and then you have the headset on. Um, Industry opportunities. So, uh, healthcare, of course, uh, uh, service, uh, maintenance, user guides. If you think about a car manufacturer, you can, for example, using augmented reality, you can pinpoint what, where's the problem in your car and maybe uh, uh, guide how to change light bulb or, or something. And uh, why the Adult entertainment here is bold is the, one of the most successful VR companies in Finland is actually doing uh, added content. So it's going uh, fast. Uh, design, museums, learning, customer service, therapy, uh, building factor fabrication, uh, logic system, design of processes, games, of course, and and uh, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood is uh, slowly uh, waking up of, of, of possibilities of the 360 movies, of VR movies. Architecture, that's kind of a self-evident case. Uh, so the status in Finland currently, the customers are slowly moving from proof of concepts to real pilot pro uh, projects. Companies, they, they have realized the opportunities, but not too many are actually currently investing in uh, VR or AR uh, because they think that the re return of the investment is not good enough. Uh, Finnish um, takers and Pro and associations are very active, but still some fear that they uh, we are actually maybe losing uh, uh, some kind of a new Nokia opportunity here that the small studios cre creating a small content for the small local uh, 
uh, market area. They are staying small and doing small. So uh, we should step over that local business and go straight to global business. Most of all, the hype is over. Uh, we might have uh, over marketed, uh, reached too far. What are the what can be expected of the VR? How it makes our uh, business better to create your revenue, and that has failed. Maybe the expectation management. Um, the VC uh, investors are more careful. Uh, VR AR content sales revenue is low. It's not that good business yet. It is business, but not that good business. Um, technically, we are very high end, but the business wise, we are kind of a lagger. It's an old story. We have all those right tools to succeed, meaning that they, if we just like prioritize and market more of those things, we, we will succeed. And of course, for, for example, we have the slush. That's a kind of a huge window of opportunity to sell our stuff to to global markets globally asia and the us they are going really strong but there is still no killer app uh, well if if we not taking into account for example pokemon there is no clear challenger for that application and why is that of course there's there are plenty of different apps but there's no one or two you can mention easily as a kind of a uh, normal dude on the street. Um, and one might be that the conventional web developers who have created uh, years of um, applications and websites, they start creating VR content or AR content. And the, the content, as I said, the content is everything. So if, if the, technically it's amazing, but it's kind of a hollow inside the whole thing, it doesn't fly. So, for example, if you go to Steam platform or Byport and you take a look at those uh, apps, they cost like one to two euros. Uh, the experience lasts for 30 minutes and that's it. But the, there's no like big hits that uh, swallows you into that magical world for half of the year. And there is not too many AAA game content available. Uh, maybe it's other way around that the uh, existing big titles, for example, Project Cars, they are supporting VR as a kind of a side product of the whole game. They didn't build it because of, because of the VR. They created the game to support VR. And that is a one uh, way to succeed here, that you first fulfill the needs of a kind of a normal audience, and then you have this... Uh, extra layer on top of that, and that is virtual reality or augmented reality. Um, globally, you have the better seed phase funding, meaning that uh, uh, in Finland, for example, money is running out sooner. Um, of course, the tech side is still dominating the debate uh, online, hardware first. But in a couple of years, create create uh, content creators like Hollywood, they will take over this and they will lead away. And um, the VR theme parks are actually very popular. And m out of these parks, is it's increasing constantly. Um, and uh, of course, the hardware gets cheaper all the time. And this week, for example, HTC Vive uh, uh, price was dropped for $200. Uh, dollars. So that is very uh, uh, essential key to to get these things to homes and offices. Uh, Finish strengths and weaknesses. Um, strengths, of course, is that we are very technology driven. Um, uh, domestically, we are creating great products. For example, Nokia Oza was developed here, Vario and Microsoft HoloLens. Um, we have the very high quality software development and we have of, co of course we have the right spirit we have the sizzle we have the strong game industry and we have a very active uh, VR AR MR scene uh, where we have different like associations companies and startups all those things together and communicating that's very something unique um, and um, but then it's 
goes back to our kind of a typical, typical um, not curses, but that things were could be doing better, meaning that marketing and productization of our great innovations that, that yes, this is great, but how to market this, how to productize this, and we should focus. And we have lack of skilled VR developers. We have lack of skilled 3D modelers. Uh, of course, you can buy that uh, uh, from other countries. But then we have, of course, this low self-confidence in international communications. And that's like why we still do that. We have all those reasons to be like very confident because we we are good. Um, of course, this twist, we have the twist in market optimism that they are... Uh, things are going to be really great, even if we just sit on a, uh, on a chair and like rolling our fingers. That's, that's, we might be too opportunistic. We have to hard work uh, to make things forward. Uh, now, of course, we have the small domestic markets, meaning that go global. And uh, Finnish Virtual Reality Association is creating a study for the Tegas. And uh, some random notes of that uh, uh, study or findings. The B2C uh, business is lacking a bit behind. A target audience coverage is small. A VR companies revenue comes from third party subcontracts mostly. Mostly B2B uh, side 3D visualizations of things, stereo camera recordings, industry driven architecture health and well-being and space use cases and that kind of stuff. And the categorization uh, between these different uh, acronyms is back. It's it's a startups actually do both or all. They don't make the difference whether they are doing virtual reality or augmented reality. Virtual reality revenue is small. The average size of the VR of a VR project is uh, 15 to 20 case. And the headcount of these companies are is uh, usually below 10 people. And uh, because of this kind of a difficult start of the whole business, uh, or challenging, not difficult, but challenging, uh, a bigger Finnish software companies, they have outsourced the model, the risk of buying small uh, virtual reality or augmented reality startups in Finland. Well, that's one way to get funded and, and lower the risks. Um, so 74% of all these companies are financing their own, uh, by their own cash flow, no VC money. Uh, half of them are financed also by owners, and 20% of them have uh, VC money in, in addition to all those other uh, fundings. Around 8% of these companies are on their AB round, meaning that they are auto optimizing B and not maybe scaling it. Um, and what is maybe a little bit ch challenging is that uh, companies are selling their conventional software development. And that all the time and energy is out from the VR and AR research. And uh, VR theme parks, they are booming. Um, and most of the companies are creating the software, the content itself. Some are creating hardware, but mostly the software. And it usually means 360 videos, uh, uh, we are as a service, and, and exhibitions and theme parks. So, <laughs> going back to, to the uh, core of the Finnish identity, uh, maybe are we again having this kind of a moment where we are having great products, great skills and great everything, but something is missing uh, the, 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 the kind of understanding of the thing that you have to put the custom, uh, customer, not the cost, customer, customer in the middle of the whole thing and create things around that uh, individual's needs and, and, and stuff, not like a... Uh, just creating something techy and cool. Uh, that's that's nice, but that's not gonna going to scale. That's not going to create 
uh, great revenues. So the building blocks for the success of the virtual reality or augmented reality is a first you need, of course, the quality content. That's everything. Uh, then you have to prioritize it. You have to think about what's the most essential part of your product. What's what's what people are ready. What are what are you, what are the things people are ready to buy and uh, pay for? Um, customer centric, of course. And then you have to do the marketing. You had really these are the essential things from the very beginning of the life cycle of the whole VR thing. And then be confident. You can do it. And uh, you need to go global right away. If not physically, uh, create the uh, marketing stuff and all that content uh, from the global point of view, like publishing your game or, or something uh, globally, not locally. And narrow down your focus. You have uh, lots of great ideas, but really it's about like two or three things that are actually the kind of most essential parts of your idea. And then, of course, use the CISO. So after all this, the race is on. Uh, it is time for virtual reality and AR and AMR. <laughs> and uh, if you want to read more or, or ask some questions online, please go to netfreak.net and let's continue there. There's a link to Facebook page.